Chapter One: Purpose and Plan. A from X to Z. It was the afternoon of eighth November, eighteen ninety-five. Wilhelm Conrad Rentgen was all by himself in his laboratory in Wiesburg, experimenting once again with cathode rays. His main piece of equipment was a vacuum tube about one meter long, in which, as we would now say, electrons were accelerated to an energy in the neighborhood of one hundred thousand electron volts. The pressure in his tube was about one thousandth of a tall. On that afternoon, Rentgen was quite startled to notice a fluorescence on his detector. A small screen covered with barium platinum cyanide, which he was holding in his hand at some distance from the tube, he had discovered what the world would soon know. As X-rays, a term he introduced in his first publication on this subject. That paper was signed by him as sole author. Nearly ninety years later, on twenty-six January nineteen eighty-three, I left my office at the Rockefeller University for an early lunch, then walked to the New York Hilton on Sixth Avenue. Where the winter meeting of the American Physical Society was in progress, Carlo Rabi was to give an invited paper in Section H B. No title for his talk had been announced, but word had come from CERN, the European Center for Nuclear Research in Geneva, that the subject was to be the discovery. Long anticipated of the W boson by the U A one team, U A equals underground area led by Rabi. Never mind for the moment what a W boson precisely is. That will be explained much later. Just accept for now that its discovery would be most important. I entered. The hotel's Sultan Ballroom joined an audience of several hundred and listened. First came a report from UA2. Another group at CERN, they too were hunting for the W, had promising results but were not yet ready to commit themselves. Rabie spoke next. He began by explaining the experimental arrangement: antiprotons with a moderate energy of 3.5 GeV. One GeV is a billion eV. Were collected in the AA, the antiproton accumulator. Modern physics has its own abundance of acronyms. This is. A roughly square donut-like ring, held at a vacuum of about one ten billionth of a tor. The pressure had to be low, since otherwise the antiprotons would be lost in collisions with gas molecules in the ring. Although this was by no means the lowest pressure when attained at CERN. It sufficed for the purpose because of a brilliant invention by Simon Vandermeer, or best accelerator man, for keeping antiprotons moving in a disciplined manner. Once every twenty-four hours, the AA releases its antiprotons, which are then accelerated in two stages. The second of which takes place. Inside a high vacuum ring, six kilometer in circumference, in which these particles reach an energy of two hundred seventy GeV. Inside that ring, they collided with protons, moving in the opposite direction with the same energy. The collisions were analyzed 
by means of a complex detector, 10 meters high by 5 meters wide, weighing 2,000 tons. Rabia explained next how six out of one billion recorded events had been singled out as bearing the indubitable signature of the W particle. This production rate, six in a billion, agreed well with theoretical expectations, as did the first crude determination of the W mass. Next to me sat an iceberg in heavy neutrino physics. As the talk drew to a close, we looked at each other and nodded. They had it. Afterwards, I talked with Robbie. He asked me whether I believed it. I said I did. He gave me a preprint of the first UA1 publication on the W, signed by 135 authors from 12 European and two American institutions. Evening had fallen. It was crisp and cold. When I walked back under the bright lights of 57th Street, I kept thinking how the content and style of both experimental and theoretical physics had changed in my life. The discovery of the W surely meant that, once again, a watershed had been reached. When I came home, I went to my desk, cluttered with drafts of chapters for a history of major. Now I knew the counterpoint with which to start chapter 1. I sat down and wrote. It was the afternoon of 8th November 1895. The next time I met Rabia was the following 9th May. We were in Princeton where the day he was to give a lecture on UA1's further progress. During a long conversation before his talk, he told me that the first example had been found of an event that looked just like the signature of a Z boson. This very heavy neutral particle was the missing ingredient needed, along with positively and negatively charged Ws, to put on a firm experimental basis the unified field theory of electromagnetic and weak forces that goes by the codename SU2 times U1. I asked Rabia whether the report he was about to give would be the first in the United States to mention the Z. It is indeed, he replied. We found this event only a few days ago. I knew then where to end.